Now with this complete, we can get rid of this sheet of paper. Uh, don't throw it away, please keep it. And we can collect ourselves a new piece of isometric paper. Now, because we might want to do more drawings in the future, we don't want to keep drawing on these and rubbing things out. What we want to do is place our piece of isometric paper behind another sheet of plain paper. Now, it's a good idea to secure this with a couple of paper clips, and this will keep your isometric paper from moving around. You can even go ahead and make a couple of marks for where the corners are to try and help locate it if it ever does move. It's always quite handy. And this way we can produce a drawing on the plain piece of paper, remove the paper clips and use the isometric grid over and over again. Now to make this a lot easier for you folks at home, uh, I'm not going to draw in here because it's very hard for you to see with my camera where the isometric grid is. So I will use uh, and I will draw on a new piece of isometric paper. The first thing that we're going to want to do on that piece of isometric paper is we're going to want to draw a cube that's 6 by 4 by 10. That should give you a cube that is a rough or pretty accurate actually representation of a pencil sharpener. If you've got a pencil sharpener at home like this, it's great if you can have it on hand so you can look at it during these videos and not just rely on the one that I'm showing you on screen. So go ahead, pause the video and have a go at drawing that cube for me please. You should have ended up with a cube that looks something like this, hopefully somewhere in the middle of the page and remembering to use our light lines and accurate confident lines and we don't want to put any of these lines down too dark because we may need to modify these slightly later especially for this curve here. Now normally I would just jump straight in and I would start transferring the information I see on this top surface here onto the top and the information on the side on the side and the information from the front to the front but we're going to break it down and we're going to draw this first in 2D. So what I'd like you to do is swap this out for now and get yourself some squared paper like this. Uh, again, it's a good idea to not draw directly on this grid paper if you can help it, but to lay a piece of paper over the top and use the paper clips to uh, keep it there. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to draw a rectangle for each of these surfaces. So you're going to want the top, the side and the front. What you should end up with, hopefully, is something that looks like this. So go ahead, have a go at drawing that for me now. Pause the video and I'll see you in just a second. OK, so you've now got a rectangle that represents the top, a rectangle that represents the side, and a rectangle that represents the front. Now, if we look at, let's say, this front one here, it will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 boxes by 1, 2, 3, 4. If we go back to our isometric one, that is exactly the same as what we have here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 by 1, 2, 3, 4. We, in essence, have the same grid on the front of here as we have on our squared paper. This means that if we copy anything we draw here and we use the square grid as a guide, we can copy it very exactly onto our isometric paper. Now what we're going to want to do is take a look at the front of the pencil sharpener and we're going to want to try and figure out where this circle is in here. We can do that by imagining this grid on the top of our pencil sharpener. We know that it's a quarter each way down, so we can almost draw an actual halfway line onto the front of our pencil sharpener. And we can see that that circle is centered along there. So we know the center of that circle is somewhere along this line. We also know it's not in the middle, so it's not here. The center isn't here it's over to one side. It's not right over to one side, but ever so slightly. So I'm going to say that's one square in. So I'm going to mark the center of that circle as being 
here, two squares in from the side. Now I know that that circle there doesn't go all the way to the edge, so I'm going to come out from here one and a half, and I'm going to go to there. I'm going to go up one and a half, and out one and a half, and down one and a half. And then I have my points to draw my circle. You can use a compass or you can do that freehand. Go ahead and fill that in now. Pause the video and jump straight back in when you're done. With that complete, we can now start to have a look at the side view. Now, on the side there's not much going on, but we do have these lines striping down here. And what we're looking at here is how much of this and where is this? It's even, so it's symmetrical, so we can count one, two, three, four, five, and we can put a little dash here and we know that it's symmetrical from here. From here I would say that this half is half lines, half flat. And I've got one, two, three, four, five boxes. So my choice is, is I'm gonna go halfway through this box here. So this is my flat area here, two and a half boxes. Then I'm gonna have lines, and then I'm gonna have the same on the other side, so two and a half boxes in, and draw a line down. So I'm just going to put a couple of lines going down here to represent those various lines on the side of my pencil sharpener. Now last but not least, we've got the top surface to do, and this one is quite complex. So feel free to pause the video and do this one quickly, and then actually we'll come back for the next video on drawing this top surface.